Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm actually going to start today's show by featuring a man who's not from the Keys, but fortunately for us, he's visiting town for a few days. Now, he's an internationally known and recognized private investigator with a reputation for getting the job done no matter what obstacles or challenges might come along the way. He's recently retired from a very successful 50-plus year as a private eye, a detective, and spy. He has helped solve thousands of cases and, of course, make life better for thousands of clients. Ben, thank you for being here with me this morning. I'm very honored to be here on your show. Well, it's wonderful having you here, Ben, because I think you are so fascinating with such a fascinating career. How did you get to become a private investigator? I had a natural... Um, a liking for people. Uh, the more diverse they were, the more I liked it. Um, I just have always been a student of the human situation. I love watching people. I'm that quiet guy sitting over uh, in the chair over in the corner at any party, just watching people, observing them. And uh, I use whatever I've learned in my life uh, through formal education or just uh, uh, from working on the street, so to speak, as a PI. I try to help people solve their problems. It's really that simple. I never set out to work for attorneys or be involved that much with law enforcement. I basically reached out through my kind of tw twist of my personality. I, was, I somehow found a way to get myself in the newspapers and on television in my local community in San Diego and people would call me because they, they sensed something. They trusted something about the way I came across. Uh, because when people have problems it's kind of like turning to your priest or your doctor. It's very, very personal. Mm -hmm. And so they share, they, they basically become naked. They, they tell me uh, the worst problems they have. Mm -hmm. And then it's my challenge to help them solve those problems. And I get great delight from doing that. And I even sometimes feel guilty that I get paid for doing that because <laughs> I love doing it. Because it's your gift that you have. That definitely is. I guess gift. I was blessed with something. I don't <laughs> know if it was a gift or what. No, you would definitely, definitely were. What are some of your high-profile cases, Ben? Some cases you could share this morning. Well, there was a period in Mexican history. That was one of my areas of speciality because I did set myself apart from my contemporaries by specializing in international contacts, by belonging to worldwide PI groups and national PI groups. That's something most PIs don't spend the money doing mm -hmm. uh, and going to the conferences. The second thing was I specialized in countermeasures and when I was legally permitted to do so, mostly out of the country, planting bugs and listening devices. So I've worked both sides of that track. And then the third specialty was Mexico. Since I lived in San Diego for most of my career, I loved doing work all over Mexico. Uh, I worked for the uh, president of Mexico, Senor Fox. I worked for the governor of Baja California, Ernesto Rufo Appel. Mm -hmm. I found the uh, two taps that the previous administration had left uh, in the basement attached to his phone so that they could find out what he was up to, mm -hmm. and so I prevented that from taking place. Uh, I got a man out of prison in Michoacan that the drug cartel had murdered a Mexican highway patrolman. Somebody had to do the time, and the way the cartel handles that, they just pick somebody off the street, they pay a bribe, get the paperwork to reflect that he did it. He sat there for four years until I was notified by the family what had happened. Uh, they basically came up with a war chest by having all the aunts, uncles, and relatives, you know, pool their resources. Mm -hmm. It took me a year, and I got him out of prison. And I didn't do it with blazing guns or helicopters or rope ladders. I did it by embarrassing the cartel, by tape recording conversations I had with the prison director, the corrupt judge, and the corrupt attorney who was related to the prison director by marriage. Mm -hmm. They were all working for the cartel, not for my client. And so I got them all offering to help me get this innocent man out of prison and mm -hmm. correct the record if I would only put money in their bank account in Mexico City, in each one of them, I got them on tape offering that, that deal mm -hmm. for the bribe, uh, handing me a piece of paper with their bank account number on it. So they couldn't worm their way out of that one. Mm -hmm. And so once I turned all that evidence over to the Attorney General of Mexico and nothing happened, I knew I had to pull that ace out of my sleeve. Mm -hmm. And in Mexico, thank goodness, there's a publication of inestimable uh, ability and honesty and credibility called Proceso which means the process. And what they did is they took those audio tapes of these three public officials mm -hmm. offering to correct justice, basically, mm -hmm. for a price. Mm -hmm. They played those tapes on the radio. And the drug cartel said, make this story go away. Right. And the way they handled it, 
they took bribes from five families to let their person be one of the alleged escapees, and my guy was let go free. Wow. And my wife and I crossed him into the U.S., then we went back and crossed his wife and baby, then we went back and crossed his two sisters. What All their story. papers are in order, they're mm -hmm. paying taxes and living the American dream. Wonderful. Thanks to you, Ben. Thanks to you. We're going to take a quick break right now, but you're not going anywhere. We're going to talk more with you, Ben, when we return from these messages. Stay with us.